Hello and welcome to the Build with Bear Workshop. My name is Pat Bear. I'm here to build a model kit. And then after that, Lego. I don't know why I decided to go with questions at the end of this, but I did. I'm going to throw the Bear Cave Lego, the Scythe emote in the chat. If you're currently a subscriber, you can throw those emotes in the chat as well. I do know what I'm doing right now, which is I'm willing energy to exist. Um, fake energy becomes real energy, uh, as they say. I'm putting out stuff into the universe so that it'll come back to me. Uh, 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 Dougma is here. Welcome, Doug. But yeah, uh, you can also be like Doug and just throw in uh, whatever. Last week is here. You can just say hi. Um, you don't have to use emotes if you don't want to. But yeah, this is the intro portion of the stream where we just kind of chat with each other. Um, I got a model kit that we're going to be finishing up. Uh, you can see right there. And then we'll, hey, wrist fan, welcome. And then we got a Lego set to build. That Lego set was purchased off my Amazon wish list by Harold H bomb. And I don't know if Harold's going to be here tonight. I hope Harold comes in for it. We won't finish it today because it's a decent sized kit. So we'll get to it uh, certainly tomorrow as well. So I think it'll be okay. Epic open world is here. Hey, what's going on? Epic open world. Hope you're doing well. Um, so tonight's agenda, uh, things I know we'll talk about in the second hour. We will of course talk about new anime. We'll, we'll, first, we'll talk about a show that uh, should have wrapped up last week because of production delays wrapped up this week. So we'll talk about an old anime. Then we'll talk about three new anime. And I, I wanted to talk about one show that's also ongoing that comes out on Saturdays. But um, one of the shows I'm going to talk about tonight had a 50-minute episode. So I was did not prepare time for that. Um Yes, Soma Spider So What released its 24th episode, 24th episode today. They were normally a Friday show, but they eight days after their last episode was supposed to air, they aired it. So it did air, um, and I'll talk about that. It's it's a it, it's mo there's a little bit of humans, but it's mostly a spider episode. And Doug, let me tell you something. If you thought, well, we know all the secrets of this show because they've been bouncing back and forth and we have information they don't have hey there's a thing that doug there's a thing that happens um there's a thing that happens doug uh that i was not expecting they got me uh because i knew something was up with one of these characters but i didn't realize it was that um i was spoiled about another thing um a thing a spider related thing i was spoiled uh about what i saw there um, but yeah, there's a thing with a character who I always knew something was up with that particular person. And yeah, um, but anyway, good evening, Dirty. Um, also, like I said, one of the anime that I watched the first episode of today was 50 minutes. And I did not, um, because I had to watch, I didn't have to. I made the decision that I was going to try to watch four shows today. And I watched one, no, wait, uh, let me, let me look. What was I going to watch today? I was going to watch, uh, um, yeah, no, I was going to watch three shows today. So I'm a spider. So what second episode remake our life and how a realist hero rebuilt the kingdom. I was also going to watch the latest episode of welcome to demon school. And I was like, I can do four shows in one day. I've got stuff going on, but I can make the time. I did not, um, plan out well enough for one of those shows being 50 minutes so welcome to demon school i'll talk about on monday because it doesn't matter um yeah that also had a title sequence that was 17 minutes in yeah dirty don't worry i also looked at the time to see the the latest title card i've ever seen in a debuting anime 17 minutes in yeah it, i mean it's it's a double episode yes dirty basically they somehow managed to get a double episode for their show which is awesome that's incredible for a new show um you know, sometimes those things happen, like, to, to be like, okay, yeah, well, here's this thing. It's a slice of life where the main character teleport or goes back in time. Um, the way I described uh, Remake Our Life is uh, it's Tokyo Revengers, but instead of saving your girlfriend who dies in the future, you go back in time to go to art school. But maybe, I mean, look, there are stakes because maybe he can change history. Uh, 
So instead of uh, solving a murder, he is fulfilling his own potential, but maybe he's also fulfilling some other people's potential because there is an event in his life that goes wrong for someone else who he meets at art school. It's uh, pretty cool. You know what? Honestly, it. I mean, I'll get into it in the second hour. It's good, but we're not we're not just going to be talking about the anime. I'm going to be talking about it at 10 p.m. Um, we'll also be talking about a couple other things. Um, uh, I think that might be of your interest, might be interesting to you. And then also a thing that is supposed to be nice, but I felt real weird about. And I don't I want to talk about this YouTube channel that I think is supposed to be chill and cool, but filled me with this like I got weird. I didn't get like creeper vibes. I just got weird vibes off of it. So we'll talk about that. Um, I'm going to retweet my tweet, try to get the word out there. Try to get the word out there. The why to get the word out there. And that's terrible. Oh, also, I can do this. I forgot to do this. Look, I'm going to put it out there. It's going to be here. I'm at 47 out of 50 subscribers. The goal is, the goal is to hit 50 subscribers. That is our goal. If you are already a subscriber, thank you. If you are not interested in becoming a subscriber, but you're still a viewer, Thank you. I appreciate it very much. Um, if you've been gifted a sub, could you like to convert that into a regular subscription? Thank you. Uh, if you'd like to give someone gift someone else a sub, thank you. These are all thank yous. Um, if you came in because you were searching for Gunpla and you don't want to stick around, well, thank you for your time. Uh, it's okay. But uh, I'm going to retweet my tweet, try to get the word out there. Um, so, quick reminder. On the 16th, you should go to twitch.tv slash PAX2 and watch this panel. It's going to be good. We recorded already, so I know that it's good because it, we, it's in the past. It was recorded in the past. It's your future, but it's my past. And I, I, it was good. It's, this, it's the PAX you don't have to go to Seattle to, to be a part of. So watch that. My guests are fantastic. Um, let's see. Also, uh, we're not going to be able to probably we won't raid him because I want to take because it starts at 11 p.m. Eastern, but I want to take time for myself before we before it starts. Uh, tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern at the Loading Ready Run channel, um, Beach Dairy is doing his uh, his version of the uh, spring wrap up uh, and summer preview. Um, Beach, uh, who is a former guest of Pax uh, of the uh, my Pax show, uh, Pat Bear's Anime Club, yelling about the shows we love. Uh, we watch different shows, so he'll have some takes. We'll watch some of the similar ones. He won't have watched some of the stuff that I really liked. Uh, he will be talking about shows that I didn't give a, a, a watch to. Um, and he might not have liked stuff that I really enjoyed. Like, I feel like he probably didn't see a couple of cutesy isekais that I watched. But... I know that his wife did because we've talked about it. But yeah, he'll also probably have thoughts on a couple things that I didn't see. We share a common thing in that we don't generally watch idol shows. Although I did watch uh, Zombieland Saga Revenge, and I don't think he did. That's the, the only idol I, I've ever really liked. Um, and maybe I should give other idol shows a chance. Maybe it's me. Could be a me problem. Anyway, I want to talk to you all about a YouTube channel called Solo Travel Japan. It has only existed for a few months, but it already has quite the follow, uh, quite the following. Um, people are viewing it. It gets recommended a lot for travel for people that look at travel stuff and also Japanese stuff. So uh, the only idol show I like is Macross. Doug, that's I mean that is a fantastic idol show. You're not wrong. Um, that is, the, you know what? I've liked two idol shows in my life. There you go. See, that's how much I know. Um, see, I didn't watch Vivi because the premise sounded like I wasn't sure if it was going to be an action show or an idol show, or if it was going to be both. And I wasn't sure I want to, I just didn't want to find out. That might be a thing that I go back to because I know people have, uh, said very nice things about Vivi. Uh, so that might be something that I revisit in the future, but as of right now, uh, I skipped it. Um, okay. So we're working on the shoulder thrusters, which have GN drives in them, which is silly in a way that I appreciate. Uh, it was laser focused at what I like, but it didn't stick the landing. I don't think that's a, that's a shame. Uh, I know some people that were, you know, I remember seeing some people being pretty interested in that show. Um, 
So I want to talk again, I want to talk to you about this YouTube channel called Solo Travel Japan. It is a person holding a camera um, uh, in first person traveling in Japan by themselves. Um, there is no voiceover. Um, everything is in text. It is in English text. Uh, and sometimes it is not 100% perfect, but that is charming and also okay. It does not matter um, because you get the gist of what the person is saying. And the thing is, it's only been out for a couple months. And it's a lot of like, here's an overnight ferry for from one place in Japan to another place in Japan. It's a 20-hour ferry from this place to this place. So check out the room. This is a train. This is the overnight train where you can get a cabin car. Here is the mini capsule that for this place. Here is a bus ride that, you know, is a double-decker bus ride where there are like, sections you can sit in and it's this whole thing and it's cool because you're seeing like what the vending hey here's the thing even if it's a six hour ferry ride apparently most ferries uh that have uh rooms that you can stay in also have laundry and i don't know why i don't know why they have laundry machines i don't know if that's like a thing they have to have or it's just by tradition they all do but like yeah if you take a 20 hour um ferry ride from one place in Japan to another, you can use laundry machines. Uh, so cloth map with no voiceover editing. So, I mean, it's basically a travel log, but, um, but just text. Uh, and there is editing. It is, it is well edited. It's not like a 20 hour, 20 hour. It's, it is well ed edited in the segments. Um, but, but yeah, it just doesn't have voiceover and it is, it is general, generally about the travel. Um, about where th this person going to these places and checking this stuff out. And here's the part where it's not meant to be strange, but does feel strange is this was all, all of this footage was filmed in the year 2021. As Japan started to open up, travel more, and these places that had been out of service for a while are coming back. Um, but it feels fucking dystopian because there aren't a lot of people. Look, I don't know how many people used to take uh, overnight trains, but they aren't right now. They are very much not taking overnight trains. So you just have very, like, there was one thing that was a, a ferry where this person was in a place where it was like, felt like a hostel, you know, like, uh, where you, you're one of many people sharing a room and there are bunk beds in it and whatever. And you can kind of like what, do whatever, um, you get a little space. Um, but it was capsules. Uh, so it was little enclosures. He was the only person in there. Uh, it is a gentleman, um, by the way, uh, he was the only person in there. There was nobody else in there. And then like, he'll walk around this large ferry, this very big ferry that goes from, you know, goes on a loop of certain places and you'll you'll see like three other people or other people maybe there's a conversation nearby and it's got that like it's got that 28 days later vibe to it like it's not like if you change the if you put music that was like horror music underneath it it, it would feel like you could recut most episodes to feel like a horror movie um it's kind of weird uh, and in also part of it is that like this person's going on like overnight things, right? So a train station even is, you know, if you're the last train out of a station, it is pretty quiet there, even on busy times of the year. But right now it's very clear that people aren't traveling. And I don't think that it, like occasionally there will be something about like, uh, mentioning, you know, like the last time I was here, it was a lot busier and stuff like that. Um, he should sneak random CGI zombies in it. Yeah. Um, but it, it's got this, like, it, it's an unintentional sinister quality to it. Like, an, it just feels strange. Um, and some of it is like rural things. You know, the train travel is certainly like, train travel is very important to certain areas of Japan, but other areas it's not as important. So that could be part of the reason why this is happening. But it just feels like I've just felt very odd about it. Like a lot of times the 
I took a train from this place to this place, like the train footage, the that generally is supposed to be kind of common. You're like, oh, cool. Like a lot of people, um, there's uh, rural train routes in Japan where people just stick their cameras like on at like near the driver and you just get like that view of the tracks. Um, uh, uh, Aura Hack, uh, Erica brought that to a 404ing it a couple years ago. Um, and that was cool as hell uh, and kind of calming. And like those videos are really long and those are real time videos. This is like an edited thing, but it did get me thinking. I'm like, that this is supposed to be like that. This is supposed to be like, how cool is traveling in Japan? Check this shit out. And instead, it does feel like, oh, I don't know if any of this is going to be here. Because like also, <laughs> this, this, this person has gone on like, things with, and they'll give like a little information about it and they're like it was like you know very clean because it was uh renovated in 2019 and you're like oh yeah then only a year and some change before people stopped writing it or they'll be like um you know they don't glo they kind of try to gloss over the signs that you clearly see mean don't sit here because they're trying not to have people in public spaces uh on on the ferry because uh, there's also nobody fucking around, nobody around anywhere. Um, but yeah, are there be something like open to 2020? And it's like, well, that's why it looks good. Um, no, so Epic Open World, this right now is just somebody um, doing like the way to travel, not like seeing the sites. Um, this person is focusing on modes of, tra of transportation. So overnight double-decker buses, Trains where you can get a, your, a car to yourself for like long train rides, ferries that go from one place to another. Like, there's like one area where the only way to get a car there is to take a ferry. Um, it's uh, it's not like, hey, let's go check out these shrines. It's like, hey, check out this cool train. Isn't this train fucking cool. Like that's that's the vibe. So I I like it, but like I said last night, I was watching it and it did make me feel a little uneasy in a way that i was not expecting to feel so i did want to talk about that because that's you know i don't have look i don't have a whole lot i got some stuff going on i got some stuff in the back burner but like you know my D, &D crew is fun i've been doing contract work where i do data entry that is boring uh yesterday i did data entry for like an hour and a half uh, half hour and a half in and realized that I had a tab wrong. Like I had tabulated something wrong and messed up a bunch of things and I had to go and fix it. And I'm glad I noticed, but it took like a lot longer than it should have to fix. Like that's the stuff I got going on. So like, if I get something like, Oh, I'm feeling weird about this YouTube channel. Like I'm going to talk about it. I was like, Oh, well, I'll talk about that tomorrow. Cause maybe some people will be like, yep, I know what you mean. Or, Oh yeah. Because it's, it's, you know, sometimes you watch like a builder on YouTube and you're like, I don't think you're good at this. You might not be good at this, huh? Um, like there are some restoration, there's like at least one restoration YouTuber that I think doesn't know how to restore things. They just know how to sand things and like clean up rust. But I don't think they know how to restore and they have like restoration in their name. And I'm like, I don't think you're good at this. So I don't know. I, I mean, I get the sense this person knows what's going on. It's just I got weird vibes. Sometimes you just get weird vibes, right? These are strangers who are just putting information out on the internet. Like they're putting themselves out there. Uh, nice data entry and systems error review is my bread and butter. Yeah, Dirty, I'm glad that I figured it out quickly. But it was just a point where I was like, I had like a, this is the thing that in doing data entry, I have learned. To trust your gut when something feels weird, it is. And if it's not weird, then, well, you wasted a couple minutes. But if it is weird, maybe you've been wasting your whole damn day. So I did, uh, I did, yeah. So I was glad that I investigated. I'm glad I was like, this doesn't seem right. Because it wasn't. Restoration sounds better than sander and rust remover. Yeah. Is it a thing where you're like, hmm, so on this project, okay, so let me guess. You're going to sand it you're going to put put it in a chemical bath you might use electricity 
Uh, and then you're going to cut out all of the wood and put in new wood and not even trying to make it match. Just have it be brand new wood. Uh, and that's and then it's restored. I don't I don't know. I don't know if you know what you're doing. Kind of my vibe on some restoration things. But maybe maybe they do know what they're doing. Maybe they know exactly what's going on. I don't know. I also, I found this out about me. So like, like I said, I've been watching this, uh, this YouTube channel, um, Solo Travel Japan. Um, and it, as I said, there's not voiceover, but there is text on screen. I really like text on, I really, not text, I really like voiceovers. I don't like the ASMR style of YouTube, like restoration, building, all that kind of stuff. I really like it when people say words out loud and then you can be like listening to them because maybe you can look away from the screen. And I know that maybe that's less active, but, uh, and I'm the subs versus and the subs versus dubs. I'm the subs guy, but I don't know. I just feel like a lot of the time I'm looking at this and I'm just like, what, what do you think about it? Say, say words out loud. Um, this is my vibe. Come vibe it with the YouTube content that's out there. But yeah. Um, a big project that I am... I, I was talking about this a bit, I believe, on Monday. Maybe it was Thursday. That there's a big project that I am... Uh, that I am in the uh, annoying position of being the person that really wants it to happen. I think more than anyone else. Like, people would be happy if it's happening. And some people don't care at all if it happens or doesn't happen and i'm the person that's like i would like this to happen very much uh voiceover and everything is better playing x of five now and having to read everything is draining it can be draining um you know i don't hate i don't hate a subtitled uh thing that especially especially a yakuza game or you know some of those i feel like a lot of the times it, you know the vibe just feels better um, but I understand if you're playing a long video game, like a long RPG, uh, not wanting to, to have to read all of it. I can get that. I can see that. Um, but yeah, so I'm working on a project, and this is how I, I look at it. This this project that hasn't actually started, but like is in is in the planning stages. We're in the hey, we need to you know we need to figure this out if we're doing this or not. Um, it's nobody's first thing except maybe me i would make this my top priority because it's very cool and i want to do it then there are a few people that this is like second tier like oh we're do if we're doing this we're in and i got you got this other thing i gotta do to pay the bills but this thing sounds cool let's do it and then there's a good unfortunately i think too many people who are like well if we're doing this I mean, you you know, let me know what I need to do and I'll do it when I need to do it and remind me of deadlines and, oh, I'll get to that if I can. And, oh, actually, I think I need to scale back a little bit here because actually I'm, I promised too many people too many things. Uh, luckily, very early in the planning stages, before we got to the doing stages, uh, we did get rid of somebody who was just like, partially through the discussion was like very clearly they had a different opinion on what we should be doing and they had strong different opinions which is great except people weren't siding with that person and it was like oh you're a doer like i'm a doer we need to figure this shit out because we can't both be here if we have different visions and we're the people that are like managing the project that's not going to work like we could have two people to manage the project like working well together but i don't think i did i was just like i was just getting the vibe i was like we're not going to work well together this is going to be bad so that person eventually like was just like hey this isn't this isn't what i want to do and it was like and that wasn't like yes i don't want to work with you it was like yes because you will not be happy with what is happening here so that's not going to work out um, but anyway, I'd like it to get done because I'd like to go from vaguely talking about it to excitedly talking about it. And I cannot do that right now. Uh, right now I cannot excitedly talk about this project because, uh, it's not, it will, 
it hasn't happened yet. We haven't we haven't decided we're doing this. We're putting uh, time and effort and energy into this. We're getting we're naming the thing and getting redirects and getting a Twitter handle and getting stuff together and getting an email address and and getting a other things that I can't say because that will possibly give it away a bit. But like we're not in that phase yet and uh I'm ready to go if we if we do it. But I gotta get I gotta get a few people to move it from their like third tier to their second tier and like maybe one second tier up to first tier with me and, a, and like one other person. And if I can get that together, I think we're good. And then I can make a cool thing with cool people, which is honestly all I want to do. All I want to do is, uh, well, I mean, all I want to do is see you turn into a giant woman, but also all I want to do is cool projects with cool people. Um, that's, that is all I actually want to do. But, you know, if I say all I want to do, I, I, I need to finish the thought because uh, otherwise it's rude. Uh, if I didn't finish the thought, uh, I would leave you hanging. Dirty, I don't want to zoom, zoom, zoom at a boom, boom because I don't need anybody to shake anything. But yeah, um, I do also want to have some fun uh, on the Santa Monica Boulevard, but... Uh, Till the sun comes up on the Santa Monica Boulevard. I should be specific about how I would like to, to have some fun. But yeah, I would also like to have some fun. Um, but yes. Uh, there, I, That's all of them I can think of. I'm sure there's more of things you want to do, but those are the ones I can think of. Uh, sorry, all I want to do uh, is one of those faces that triggers music in my head. I mean, Dirty, you don't have to apologize. That's what's happening to me right now. Um, so, uh, I, yeah, um, I'm hoping this project happens. I'm not holding my breath, but I'm also don't want it to slip away because I think it's cool. And as I said, that's up my alley. Okay, so we got one of these shoulder things done with the GN drive. We can push this here, and then it goes from like, hey, I'm on the shoulder. And it this thing doesn't even sit on this. It like barely sits. It's weird. Um, there's a number of things I don't like about this kit. I kind of don't like how these aren't part of the shoulder. They're just on the shoulder. I don't think that's cool looking. And also, I absolutely hate this uh, waist piece and the way it connects. I absolutely despise it. It is, it barely sits in there. It does not fit well. Uh, it does not look good. Also, this is just a weird choice. I mean, it's not the kit part that's weird. It's the, well then... As I say that, I can't get this thing to sit there anymore. Um, why is there so little armor on this part of the kit? Why does this kit have such little armor? It's got like, no, it's got this piece here. Well, what's going on here? There's this wasted space on this kit. This, it really looks like it has underwear, which I know some kits get accused of. Or sometimes the, this section of a kit is referred to as the diaper and this kit is just like let's highlight that let's highlight the weird empty space on this part of the kit i don't know i'm uh i'm not a big fan of it uh i like a lot of other parts of this kit but i don't enjoy that part anyway we're almost done we got to build the the, the the other shoulder here and then we got to build the sword guns or the gun swords is it supposed to be a female robot in a bikini armor? Epic of World, I mean, I'd almost, honestly, if that was it, it would be terrible, but it would be understandable because there is a uh, a culture of that nonsense. And you could be like, I, that I could be like, oh, fine. But it, I don't think it's that. <laughs> um, I could be like, I could eye rolly accept it. But no, I just believe they designed it weirdly uh we will have some leftover pieces here we're going to use a couple of these here but some of these are left over from uh another version of this kit um you know there's leftover pieces from a different incarnation because some of these parts are from 2008 that were reused for this um if this is based on uh which happens and that's how you get kits like this uh that i mean look i don't i don't want to say 
that one of the reasons why the uh, build fighters and build divers exist is so that they could reuse old kits with modified new parts. I don't want to say that's why these kits exist, but it must have been a great selling feature when they were trying to get this show off the ground to say, well, you know, every robot in the show is based on an old robot, so we can just take the, the old parts, uh, the old Gundam parts, and then put new parts on and, and then sell them again. That must have been very enticing as a project. Uh, not just for the nostalgia for people who watch the shows and see the old kits. The toy market strikes again. I mean, that's the whole thing, right? Epic Open World, that's honestly the whole... I mean, that's how we get cool gunpla is the idea that people buy cool gunpla like you don't get you know we can't but we can't buy it if they don't make it and they don't make it if we don't buy it so i get it it's not my favorite i don't love it um but yeah this i mean this like i said this kit uses parts from 2008 and then new parts from whenever this was released uh, i can't remember when it came out 2000 and it 2018 so th so this kid has parts that are 10 years old at the time of this coming out. I mean, it's new sheets, but it was already designed and manufactured, and then they add some new stuff to it. Uh, that's why this was like A, B, C, or it was like A, B, and then like H, I, J. <laughs> so that's how you know, they're just like, oh, yeah, well, we'll just call it other things. Put out a new kit. But here's the body, with body complete with its cool drives on it, the shoulders. And now we're going to build... Um, gun swords or sword guns, however you want to say it. Of course, also I want to say thanks to everybody that's here. Uh, welcome, welcome to the old Bill Bear Workshop. Um, hope you're all doing well. Uh, very funny to. Uh, oh, I'll tell you this. Here's the thing. We're going to talk about an app that's cool, but I'll, I'll, this is a short thing. So, um, I've mentioned on this stream before. Beyond the bot, uh, beyond the bot, um. They were originally a group uh, uh, that focused on anime videos under the Channel Federator line. Um, uh, and then they stopped doing, well, Channel Federator decided not to continue uh, making anime content. And so then they left and, and uh, uh, created Beyond the Bot, which is their, their uh, anime-focused video essays, which are great. And they range in lots of different topics. Well, they discussed and today's video was every isekai uh and how the protagonist or protagonists ended up in a different world so it was just looking at all of the different ways and it was categorizing them now i will say right off the bat they had magic and summoning as two different things because sometimes you are brought to a different world via a spell that people cast from another world or you're brought to another world because you opened a book uh, or you took a selfie in front of some sort of ancient artifact or something like that. Um, uh, I can't, you know, so that so they classify as two different things. But in my mind, you summon via magic and they should be one. And there was like getting hit by a truck specifically, dying in general, mystery. Um, or video game and 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 also sometimes mystery or not or also man-made gate tunnel or door uh so which is fun because that i think counts for inuyasha because uh kagome while it's magical kagome does fall down a well and then get transported to a, a different world um i think summoning won the most summoning and magic um, and cause it was funny. Cause like, if you actually look at the history of Isekai, uh, truck coon, uh, getting hit by a truck, isn't that actually that popular, but there are important Isekai where that happened. So it became the trope, um, because it's like kind of random. Also a few times characters have died in because they were hit by a car, not, not a truck. So they're, they're ones that are not that. Which I also thought, I was like, oh yeah, you're right. Some of these aren't car related. Um, but it was very funny because like, they went off a list. And so people in the comments were arguing about like, well, is War on Geminar an Isekai? And I argue War on Geminar isn't an Isekai. Because 
um, uh, it's he's not traveling to a different world. Uh, our main character, uh, Kinshi, or Tenshi's brother, uh, his mother is from that world. So he's returning to the birthplace of his mother. So I don't think that's an isekai. Um, because I don't think he's traveling to a different world. I don't think that follows the actual uh, rules of it. But then it's like, I think that Irma, uh, Welcome to Demon School Irmakun is, because he has been taken from one reality and moved into another one. It does it reverse Isekai? Does that actually count? Well, would that make Dragon Maid an Isekai? Well, you know, is Kobayashi is Kobayashi the main character? So therefore, and this thing was like Tenchi Muyo. Tenchi's the main character, and women from other worlds come to his. But that doesn't make that an isekai. Um, but was he born on Geminar or was he born on Earth? Okay, dirty, that makes, the, you know, that is, that's a fair assessment. He is born on Earth. It's just that he, his mother was born on the planet or the dimension he goes to. So I can see that. I think it's fair to argue that that is indeed an isekai. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, some people apparently... People categorize Full Dive, uh, which is the most recent show from last season, as an isekai, which I definitely don't think it is because he he has to complete a game, but he's not really trapped in that video game. But also, then they're like, well, what about Sword Art Online? Because even though the first season is being trapped in a video game, the show continues. And then there are seasons where he's not trapped in a video game. So that is that still an isekai? Or was it sometimes an isekai? Uh uh, people think that some of Hunter Hunter is an isekai, but it's because Greed Island. But they're not trapped on Greed Island. They, you know, Killua leaves for a few hours. They're not really trapped there. They and it's and it's they go into a video game world, but it's not really a video game world. It is on that same planet. So it's like no, it that takes some liberties with the notion of. It. But it's not that. So it's one of those things where like it does none of this shit fucking matters. Uh, because there's an Isekai manga where the protagonist is born on Earth, but his parents were born and escaped from the world he's being summoned to. Yeah, dirty. So that like to me. Also, hey, there's an you know what? There is an Isekai that they hmm, actually I'm sorry. There's a show that takes place after a guy returns from being Isekai. And I can't remember what it is, and it's dirty. Uh, not dirty like uh, dirty in the chat. It's like filthy. Uh, so I don't remember the name of it. But basically a whole adventure happens that we don't see. And then he returns and he comes back in with his quote unquote sister, who is really uh, the, the demon lord's daughter. But that is set. But that that I always found really interesting because we're starting with him returning from being Isakad. Uh, and it's actually like life after being a Sakai, which is kind of interesting. Can't remember what it is. Also, he's got a quote unquote harem, but one of the girls is not interested in him. And that's always interesting when that happens. Um, he brought her back wrapped up in a bag. Yes, dirty. He, uh, he, she was in a duffel bag and we did not know that at first. Uh, that's a whole thing, but that show is very itchy. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, none of this matters and it's fine, but it is kind of fun to like argue. Uh, yeah, uh, Cuttlefish, I, I don't believe that is what it is. Um, Cuttlefishman, I should say. I forget what it's called, but it is like, it is an interesting thing that like it's picked up after the fact. Like we don't really, we see like moments of him. He starts in that world, but most of the show is him back on in their world, which I don't know. That's just, it was... It was an interesting premise that then got weird because the show is weird. Um, Doug says, uh, okay, went and watched um, uh, So I'm a Spider, So What? And okay, now I'm ready to hear about it. Okay, Doug, well, you've got about 15 minutes uh, and change because I will talk about it in the second hour, but I do have to do, you know, we will talk about it. I always do it in the second hour because sometimes people want, that's what the thing they're most here for is anime talk. And then there's some people who are like, this is where I peace out. And I also respect that and understand that. If you're here for five minutes, if you're here for 15 minutes, if you're here for two hours, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Um, the biggest fear that I have uh, as a streamer is that no one will be there when I start. 
So especially for the folks that come in it early, thank you very much for that. Uh, but that is, yeah, that's my number one, like, where, uh, where, uh, I wish, I wish somebody was here. Oh, no. Uh, so it's always the big fear, uh, which is why I don't start right off the back. Yes, working on Gunpla. You got a Gunpla question. Okay, go ahead. Feel free to ask that question. We got some time. Uh, what is the best Gunpla for supporting itself? Talking about um, hmm. uh, watching while wearing headphones tonight because the neighborhood has been celebrating with fireworks every night since Wednesday. Thankfully, in this neighborhood, uh, we, they do not, uh, we don't get a lot of fireworks. We'll hear some. Um, but we won't say, hey, what's up, ghost? Uh, okay, so to answer your question, uh, Cuddlefish Man, um, I think it's some sort of SD Zaku. Um, yeah, so you by supporting yourself, I think, are you saying uh, that it can stand up on its own uh, and it doesn't need like a stand, right? Center of gravity, so this ability in falling over when the cabinet shakes, etc. Yeah, so SD Gundams are actually in general pretty sturdy. Um, because they, they're not that big, right? Um, Zaku's, yeah, have big... Zaku's have big feet is just a thing that I was starting to say and then didn't want to finish it, but I will because it's true. Um, they got big robot legs. So, yeah. Um, Sazabis are actually, to me, the, the most sturdy mobile suit that I have built. Um, the real-grade Sazabi... Uh, I had on a shelf for a very long time, and that thing didn't budge. The shelf got knocked into. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's what I'm saying, Cuttlefish Man. That's why I was like, oh, I don't know if I should say that this whole thing. And then I was like, eh, I guess I'll finish saying it. But yeah. Um, uh, in my opinion, I think the Sazabi is incredibly sturdy, especially if you don't put the rockets in the uh, in the backpack. Um, but uh, the Zaku's probably are like a Zigog might be because it's got I mean it's got a lot of armor, but it does also have lots of big. It's got big robot legs. Um, anything from Gundam uh for g gundam is going to be bad because that's when they had rubber uh rubber on the soles of the feet and they had rubber hands and the rubber feet did not did not like that did not work uh but also main gundams are always going to be a little top heavy and probably want to probably want to stand um not all of them but a lot of them like aren't good on their own and you gotta you gotta work with what you got by putting them on a stand but yeah i mean that's what i think anyway Trying to think about, like, yeah. Um, dirty kits. That might be it, yeah. The Sazabi, I remember the real grade, and even the high grade I've done of that was really good. The Gushin from uh, IBO uh, is the sturdiest one I have made so far. Dirty, you're, I don't, you're not wrong there. Uh, especially when you use the giant hammer that comes with an extra content point. Yes. I mean, that thing is, that thing is, you know, it's not Zaku-esque, but it's like living in a, you know, it it lives in a world where the Zaku exists. Like, you know, like, it doesn't. But you know what I mean by that. It's like, it's built off the knowledge of that. Uh, and in some ways, maybe even a tribute to the, to the grunts out there. Um, but yeah, you're totally right. Uh, that high grade was very sturdy. I didn't keep that one too long, but I do remember that one being pretty, pretty good. It's really just that any kit that has, like, Gundam feet it isn't going to be that sturdy. And also, even though I love them, the Iron-Blooded Orphan kits in general, the Gundams of Iron-Blooded Orphans, specifically, I should say, uh, were not, are not that sturdy because of the, um, the way they designed the legs to be kind of demonic-looking instead of looking like boots. Um, just the way the heels are. They look fucking rad, but they are not that stable. You really do need to stand for a lot of them, unless they have, like, extra legs. Um, uh, I feel like some of the Turn 8 Gundams would have awkward ones, but not Trevor saw those kits. So I've only built... I built the Turn A, and the feet was not the awkward part of it. The build was just... 
it wasn't top heavy. It was ba- actually pretty basic. It was a weird to build because the chest unit is so strange. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't classify that as being an odd build. Uh, okay, so we've got we're gonna do one of each. Uh, we've got the gun portion, and then we'll build the. Um, uh, sorry. Yeah, we've got the gun portion, and then we'll also build the. Um, uh sword version that's what i was trying to say i was like why can't i remember what to say here but yeah there's a sword ver- there's this, the sword and the gun those are the two ways to do it this the the gun is just holding it like a handle and the sword is holding it like a sword you know it's it, it, there's nothing remarkable about this that's one way i'll show you the other when we build the other one uh that's it there's there's nothing special about this it's just like yeah it's a sword or a gun um thinking of the mrc u11d walking dumplings especially <laughs> yeah 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 i mean like i said i've only seen a few of those kits like i saw the, I, I built the only one from turn a that i built was the turn a your main gundam uh so i can't really speak on anything else but yeah so you can hold it like a sword you can hold it like a gun it's a gun sword you get it We'll build that in a second here. I just remembered if you still have the moon Gundam, I found out from Nextlander Discord, there's a hidden feature where you can do the moon plates like a straight wings as a reference to the manga bit. Yes, Lashbrook, I did see that. Um uh, I not I didn't see the Nextlander uh discussion board, but I did see that uh in people discussing some of the things you can do with that. Um, and yeah, yeah, that is pretty cool that you can mod that a little bit. You not really mod it. You just can, uh, a w- different ways. There's a bunch of different ways to do the plates on there. It's pretty neat. I won't lie. That, that kit is just great, you know, in, in great in concept. And I don't know if I liked building it. I don't know if I liked how it looked when it was done, but it's got good bones. It's got a good idea to it. Just didn't really hit me. Didn't really feel like I wasn't like hell yeah. I was like I'm glad I built this, but all right, and that's going to be one of our last pieces here. Um, in a few moments, we will take a pause for the cause. We got to take photos of this. We got to get ready on our Lego, um, and I'll talk about ways you can support the channel and go through all that. And then we'll uh, we'll talk Lego stuff, and then we'll talk anime. Um, so I do want to say before we get into all the anime talk, um, there is an app that I recommend you checking out. It's called Brickit. One word: B R I C K capital I T. Brickit. Um, it is an app. I do not know what it's out for. I know that it's out on iOS. I don't know if it's out on other devices. So I apologize for not having that information. I'm using it on that. Um, so I. Uh, it takes a photo of a pile of Legos and then using machine learning identifies the parts and then gives you options for things you could build with some of the parts there. Now it does tell you a couple parts missing. So you can actually, some of the times you can't actually finish the thing without switching things around or changing colors. Um, but you can then look on your device and see instructions. They have a lot of instructions saved on there for a lot of things. Um, right now you can't, uh, uh, take a, a several photos and stitch them together. You just take a photo of a pile. So it's limited in that way. I would love for them to be save and then take another photo of another pile and then um, uh, combine them. Uh, also, you can, if, you, if you've built a set and you know you have all the pieces for a set, you can say, hey, I have this set. And it'll give you options of things you can build with pieces from that set. So you can go that way. You can search for sets and all that. Um, it's very basic. It's very new, but it fucking rules. Uh, and it's a cool piece of technology that I am super into. Uh, and I can't wait to see it get better and better. Um, it has a little trouble in low light with dark colored, uh, Lego pieces. So as I said, it's not perfect. It's figuring it shit out, but um, there's a lot to love about it, and I'm super fucking excited about it. Uh, I think it's it could be very, very cool. So 
keep your eyes peeled. I really, uh, 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 Bricket is the thing you should look for. Um, I think they're going to do some cool stuff with it uh, in the future. It's, it's going to get better and better. Humans have difficulty with dark colored Legos and low light. Yes, totally. I feel like you shouldn't knock it far. No, I'm just telling you this is a thing to look out for. So like maybe you need to move a lamp before you take a photo or you want to separate your dark colors or keep them in the middle. Um, but it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, I, I'm going to wait for it to mature a little bit, but I am going to do like a random big pile of Lego at one point, uh, take a photo of it and then see what options I have and then try to build something on stream from that. Store Lego like my wash. Yeah, separate the colors. Yeah, yeah. I mean, certainly could. But um, I'm very interested to see what what where they're going to be in a couple of years or a couple of months because it's a really, I think, just stellar, cool idea. It's uh, to bar. Does it allow you to be color agnostic in building sets? I believe so. You can change some things around and like go like, oh well. Yeah, I, I believe so. I, I don't 100% quote me on that, but I believe you. There's some customization you can do on that side. I haven't dug super far deep into it. I've mostly just like proof of concept. Like, hey, let's see if I can do this with a pile of Lego I happen to have, uh, and it worked. And I was able to see a few things, and some of them are very basic. They're like 15 piece things. So I, I do want to get a bigger pile and see what I can get them to do. Hey, Harold, just subscribe to tier one, 44 months. Uh, five, five dollar, five dollar foot long. Harold, thank you so much. Listen to the Barricade Lego, the Scythe Mo in the chat. Thank Harold for uh, doing that. Really appreciate that. Also, Harold is hosting the stream. Thank you, Harold. Appreciate that as well. Uh, thank you for renewing your subscription. Uh, again, folks, we are at 47 out of 50 there. I'm trying to get back to that big old five zero. Which is okay if we don't. If we don't do it tonight, that's all right. If we don't do it in the future. You know, I don't know if I would like to get back to 50, but that's okay. Uh, 50 just means a good number of, uh, a good payout every month, which I can then put back into building model kits. All right. We did a little panel lining on one of these. We didn't panel line the other one. I think that's okay. We're going to put the sword version in, put the gun version in. And that's, that's, that's what we got here. That's our, that's your lot. That's this kit. This was bought from my Amazon wish list, which is fantastic. Um, this doesn't really it too well but we've got a gun and we've got a sword and uh and that's our kit this is the gundam double o diver from gundam build divers uh and that is now we're gonna be switching over to lego so i'm gonna get some move some stuff out of my way so i can move stuff in my way i'm gonna a bunch of things on my bed over here awesome a bunch of things, but I don't toss this knife. I am not tossing a knife. Placing a knife over there. Getting these things out of my way because we're doing Lego here. Uh, Keeper Chat, what's the best Gundam series name to say? Is it Turn A? Gundam series name to say? I mean, Iron Blooded Orphans just sounds fucking cool and terrible and great. Not like terrible, but like. Oh no, like fucked up in a way that's fun. Char's counterattack is pretty fun. You're not wrong. Um, it's not Gundam Sea Destiny because that sounds like word jumble, um, in my opinion. That sounds like word salad. Uh, I mean, Gundam Age sounds fucking cool, right? I think Gun Unicorn, okay, 8th MS team, all right. I mean, Gundam Age. Gundam Age. I don't know. That just sounds cool. Uh, Reconquista in G. Yeah, I mean, that's why the nickname g Reco has stuck all this time. Because people are like, oh, you mean g Reco? I mean, it's that. that is a lot to say. Um, so let's turn this like this. I got to take a photo of this. Doing that. All right, good. We took this. We can put this in the books. We have built this kit. It is complete. And we will be building a Lego set. Oops, not that one. This one. Put that up here. 
and open that up there. Uh, we were working on a, a Lego set here that was purchased by Harold. Thank you so much, Harold, for picking this kit up. Uh, uh, I really appreciate it. This is the Speed Champion series, the Dodge, and we've got the uh, two Dodges. Uh, we've got the Challenger, the 2018 Challenger, and we've got the 2070 Charger. So, uh, so we're going to work on that. Um, because it's two cars here, you can see we've got plenty of decals on here. So we've got some decals to put on. And then also there's a little road thing, which is pretty fun. Um, so we'll put that there. Got my tools ready to go there. Um, and we'll be, we will be Nolan. Uh, I'm just starting with bag one and I'm starting with book one. There's two books and we're starting with bag one. And I believe, I mean, we're starting. Yeah, we're, we got here. We're, we got our, uh, our first car right there, ready to go. Oh, and we got somebody with a checkered flag. That's fun. That's in book two. Um, but yeah, let's get, we'll get our driver going with their cool outfit. Which is stuff there. Yeah, very excited about that. Uh, but yeah, this is a, you know, two two cars for the price of one. And we'll, uh, we will start by no link. But we will take a pause for the cause, though. Pause for the cause is my way of promoting my shit. And uh, giving you opportunities to help me out. Let me just get these bags open here first. And then we'll... Uh, We'll get uh we'll get knowing and building because uh, that is what we like to do we'll do one bag at a time it will make our, my life very easy to do that uh i might bag i might take the second bag and know that on my own uh before monday because uh, that is easier to do but right now uh let's go over to the intro uh page here and um i'm going to Move my keyboard so that I can use it. Uh, that would be a good kit for a Lego Dom. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dom Torello, indeed. Get your final, uh, your final, uh, your fate, fate and furious. FF9. Um, hey, if you're currently a subscriber, let's throw the Bear Cave the Lego the site the moat in chat. Let the people know that you are a subscriber, and these are the cool emotes, which is a reward you get. As I said. Uh, I'm trying to get back to 50 subscribers. It's okay if I don't get there tonight. It literally is. But uh, for $5 a month or using your Prime gaming token, if you have Amazon Prime, you link it with your Twitch, uh, you get that token you can use for somebody. That is a way to support what I do here. You're under no obligation to do so. If you'd like to become a subscriber, it would mean a lot. I appreciate that. You could give the sub. There's nobody gifted subs because it's still early in July. It's July 3rd. So we haven't had any gifted subs. But I do, you know, if you would like to do that, you're more than welcome to uh, to gift a sub. Uh, if you've been gifted a sub, you can convert that into a regular subscription at any time, and they won't charge you till your month is up. Um, if you use your Prime, you got to manually renew that. Uh, so if you ever like, hey, why did I see an ad there? Or why can't I use the modes? Well, it's because it expired. Um, but if you're, you know, using a credit card, then they just charge you. Um, but thank you very much to everybody who is a subscriber. I do uh, really appreciate it. Um, also, bits and coins always appreciate it. There's nobody at the bits, the cheer leaderboard. So you could join with a good cheer and you could join the leaderboard there. Again, under no obligation to do those things. But if you'd like to, you could. Uh, I'm going to talk about, oh, we got, speaking of which, Harold just cheered 133 bits. Thank you so much, Harold. Jumping up on the top of the leaderboard there. There's Harold at the top of the cheers leaderboard. Appreciate that, Harold. Thank you very much for that. Um, uh, so yeah, like I said, I'm going to talk about ways you can support the channel. All of this is optional. You don't have to do that. I'm going to go through different ways you can do it. It'll take like five minutes. Then we'll get back to one, talking about anime, and two, sorting through this Lego to get ready to do that. Um, so if you were like, Pat, I would love to support you, but not here on Twitch. That's not what I do. Well, I have a Patreon, patreon.com slash patbear. There are four different tiers you could join. The $1, the $3, the $5, and the $10. Uh, and you get different rewards for each tier. So consider that. That is a thing you could just do if you wanted to. And also, it's the beginning of the month. So that's a great time to join my Patreon. It's early in the month. Um, so that's an option. Uh, also, I have a YouTube. Now, subscribe to my YouTube, youtube.com slash patbear. Uh, and if you're watching this on YouTube, what's up? You can see, find all these links in the show description. Um, but also you could join my YouTube and you get one video early every week because I put a new video out every Wednesday, but you would get that video. What? what huh? 
on a Tuesday, which is pretty neat. Um, so you can do that. And of course, also, as I said, subscribing is free on YouTube. So you just do that. Um, direct donations is another way to support what I do. Uh, there are three ways to do that. And everything I make through direct donations uh, that I collect through donations, through Patreon, through Twitch, through uh, Google AdSense and YouTube uh, revenue, all goes back into buying model kits and equipment. I just had to put some money in uh, uh, towards a, a couple kits that I'm picking up. I'm looking to see what kits I want to buy. I think tomorrow I'm going to be purchasing a couple of kits uh, to keep my backlog going. Um, but also I have this Lego set and another Lego set that was bought off my Amazon wish list. Uh, and those take precedent. If you buy something on my Amazon wish list, it jumps the queue and I build it sooner. Um, uh, so we'll talk about that. As I said, I do have an Amazon wish list. Everything that, that you buy from there, um, I shoot a video about. So when I receive something, I make a video like, hey, check this out. I got this on my wish list. I'm going to build it on stream. Um, uh, and yeah, it's just making a video as a way to say thank you. I've got Lego sets. I've got high grades, master grades. Um, I've got inexpensive kits, incredibly expensive kits, weird kits that I would like to build. Um, uh, all kinds of different things and you could purchase those and yeah, they'll come to me in the mail. I'll shoot a video about it. You can include a note if you'd like, but sometimes you can't include a note, which is weird. Um, I've got a couple pieces of gear at the bottom of the page because it's always fun to have a few pieces of gear because sometimes people don't know what to buy. Um, now, and as an alternative, uh, you could buy a gift card at USA Gundam store. And then if you go to USA Gundam store, you could, uh, you get the gift card. They send you an email with the code. You then DM me on Twitter with the code, which would be great. And then I'll buy something for USA Gundam Store. Maybe it'll be pre-order. Maybe it won't be. Just found out uh, that a thing I thought wasn't coming until January that I pre-ordered from USA Gundam Store is actually coming. Uh, where is it? It's written down. It's actually coming in November, which is great. Which one was that? Two. Oh, no. Oh, no. Let me find it. Oh, uh, it is the, uh, the Live Lance, uh, Heaven was, a, what I believed was supposed to be, oh no, that, that's November. October is the Barbatoris, which I thought was going to be January. And that's October. So that fucking rules. So I got a bunch of stuff coming from pre-orders and such coming soon. Um, which I'm very excited to do, uh, to build. Uh, let's see. What are the things? Uh, if you want to support me in a way that does not cost money, I got a discord. I post build photos at the end of every stream. People post stuff they're working on. Um, there's a place to promote yourself. There's a just general chat. If you just want to generally chat, it's a nice little uh, community. Um, of course, because of course it is. It's made up of people like you. So of course it's great. Um, I got a couple videos to plug. Uh, so on Monday, I will have a new episode of Pat Bear's Anime Club, uh, which I recorded on Wednesday live in front of people. It was my spring wrap up and my summer preview. Um, if you wanted to see my last video, uh, Pat Bear's Anime Club, you could click the link here in the show description, uh, or here in chat, which is, uh, about some queer anime because it was celebrating the end of pride month and talking about some anime that, you know, is very queer forward. Uh, some of the, like are the vocals, some just have fucking good, cool representation, which is just nice to have. Uh, and then Bear With Me is an ongoing video series where I react to things. Uh, this one's real fucking good. It's just me reacting to two cats who act very differently from one another. And I just fucking love it. The source video is just incredible. And I'm having a great fucking time reacting to those cats. So you can watch that. Uh, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to drink a little water. And then I'm going to get ready to talk about anime. A little water here. Get ready for the thing here. All right. And then we'll talk about these anime. And if you watched any of these shows, feel free to, uh, you know, give your thoughts in the chat. Uh, we are talking about the 24th and final episode of, uh, of the at least the first season. We don't know if there's going to be more of uh, Soma Spider So What. So we'll be talking about that. Uh, and we'll be talking about um, uh, My Next Life is a Villainous, All Roots Lead to Doom X, which is the second season of that, which premiered uh, yesterday. Uh, and we'll be talking about 
uh, Remake Our Life, which is a new series that, that started uh, today, and how, to, how a realist hero rebuilt the kingdom, which is another new isekai uh, that had its first episode, of course, today. Um, I did not watch the case study of Vanitas. I got about two minutes in. It's a vampire story. The vampires can't hurt humans, but maybe some want to. Somebody's got to save the day. I, it just didn't. I was just like, Ugh. I bounced off of it. I might go back to it, force myself to watch it. If people were like, actually, it's real good, but I did not watch it. Um, the Honor at Magic High School, I will not be talking about weekly, but I will watch it. I didn't watch it today, but I will watch that. Because unfortunately, I am a sucker for the regular Magic High School, even though it is a, a bad series. It's very bad. But this one is like the sister following it because she's the honor student. They just say honor instead of a regular. They go honor. It should be honor. It would feel better if it was honor student. But it's following her. And it just unfortunately or fortunately, one of the minor characters has more to do that I like in the show, has more to do in this. So I'm going to watch it. I mean, I just know. Look, I just know I will. I just know that I'm going to watch it. Uh I, I will talk about that. And Tokyo Revengers, I did not watch today's episode of Tokyo Revengers, uh, but I don't chat about that weekly because um, I wasn't sure if I liked that show, but I actually really do. I talked about it on Wednesday. That show is fucking so weird in that it... The idea that he travels... The idea that he travels back in time doesn't mean anything because he uh still sucks and it's it's the funny idea is that he's like i'm gonna travel back in time oh no i'm still a wimpy little kid so even though i know what happens in the future i can't really do anything i need the power of being a good person to help me oh also doug if you didn't know this we didn't know this until like a week ago Tokyo Revengers is a double core. It's two, it's double length. It's going to be 24 episodes. Um, and last week's show episode was not the season one finale. It was the first half of the season finale. And it's continuing. And there was a new episode today. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, but, uh, but that was the thing that people did. It was not announced as being a double length. It just is a double length. And people were like, what? Oh, shit. Okay. Tokyo Avengers. Hell yeah. Or, I mean, I guess there's more of it. Um, that show is surprisingly good. And I did not think it would be because I I watched the first episode and I was like, oh, that's no, it's a time loop. Oh, we can. Oh, I guess he can go back and forth in time. That's kind of fun. We'll talk about time travel more later. But right now, let's get into So I'm a Spider, So What? This was So. If you haven't been watching the show, it's going to be very tough to catch you caught up. But basically, a whole class of high school kids got isekai into the past. Or sorry, into a different world. And most of them are human. A couple of them aren't human. They are, um, they're, we find out later that there's a demon, there's a, a vampire, there's uh, um, someone was reincarnated as a dragon. So the various reincarnations. Um, there are a few we don't know. Most of them are just humans. They're just humans. They got some special abilities because they were summoned, but they're mostly just humans. Except our main character, who's a fucking spider. And so a big portion of the show is following the spider around. As she makes her way in this big labyrinth, trying to survive and trying to figure out what's going on. And we jump between her and uh, we, we also see... Some humans they're going to school they're trying to figure some stuff out they're having interpersonal relationships there's a bigger threat looming threat of the demons uh there's some conflicts between an uh, uneasy truce between humanity and the elves there's a bunch of other things happening right and you think oh this is kind of fun we're seeing like we're jumping between i don't really like the humans so much i'm more interested in spider story but okay well we'll jump back and forth between the two and that's fine Except we're not jumping back and forth between the two in real time. We're jumping back and forth years. Because it makes sense when you actually think about it. We're watching these kids be young adults, be 15 years old or 18, whatever. 
in school. And we're watching the spider start their life from being born. So we're jumping forward in time. And some events that are meant to look like they're happening at the same time aren't happening at the same time. They happened in the past. And they just reflected in the time. And then maybe some of the events that we saw happening in one timeline are because of what happened in the previous timeline. And then eventually they, we do get to the point where we are like characters are going to get caught up, but we jump back and forth. Now, some episodes are heavy on the kids, the Isekai kids, and some episodes are spider heavy. And not everyone feels the way I do, where they prefer the episodes that are about the spider because she's the main character and fun and not about the other kids because it's a pretty bare bones fairly generic not that interesting isekai like it's a regular isekai so some people prefer the weirdo isekai like myself and some people prefer some people don't mind the not so weirdo isekai the actually pretty bare bones basic you know hero trying to save the world adopted you know homeland trying to keep people together kind of a thing oh there's a conflict oh the demons are coming and all that um So anyway, back in episode 22, the Demon Lord, uh, if they were all born around the same time, then yeah, the spider would grow up faster rate, especially when she started uh, thinking of herself from square one. Yeah, dirty. So a bunch of, we, we even see, so it makes sense, right? That she wasn't like frozen in time until they were all 15 year olds. But the way the show jumps between things, like there's a thing where there's a dragon uh, coming out like there's a dragon being in, uh, annoyed with or, or, or the spy, spider feeling scared of this dragon and then we cut to a dragon coming out of the ground which is a very rare thing apparently and like causing a problem for the humans right uh so it makes it makes it feel like those two things are connected when they're not connected to those moments they're just they just both happened so they do a pretty good job of kind of keeping that truth from you um but anyway, um, uh, the Demon Lord has used Abyss Magic to attack our spider. And then we had episode 23 where we had no spider at all. And you're like, okay, well, what happens to the spider? Because we, we're pretty much sure that the spider, we, we know pretty well that the spider has become a, a, a demon. And it's like a humanoid looking demon form. Like, we're, we're damn sure that that's what happened. But... um. In the uh, in the past, we're like, uh oh, abyss magic can can fight through all other forms of magic. So even though our spider has regenerative properties and is basically immortal, our spider is not going to fucking be able to deal with this. Our spider's dead. Well, our spider recently, spider got the ability to lay eggs, which you'd think like, oh, that doesn't really help. That just means that there'll be another thing going there. Like that doesn't actually help our spider. But it does, because our spider can put one of her parallel minds in an egg and hatch a version of herself. She basically reincarnates. Uh, so our, our girl who got reincarnated as a spider can now reincarnate herself as a, no a new spider, which is pretty handy and a good get a jail free card. Now, of course, she can't immediately lay more eggs, so it's she has to like be careful if she got attacked by this magic again. Uh, she would be in trouble. But right now, she's okay. Um, and she also was able to evolve. Okay, and then we jump back to the present day. That was the past. We're now in the present. And uh, a thing that happened at the end of episode 23 was there were mechs. The magic that the elves, the elves' uh, secret weapon against the demons, and probably against the humans later, uh, um, is that the elves have some sort of magic they stole from another world, which in this case is motherfucking mechs. They have these big robot tank things that come out, and, uh, you know, looks like, oh, this will be trouble. It's not, it's actually not trouble. Um, Sophia, who is a vampire, and Wrath, who is a demon, there's no fucking problems there. They're fucking golden. Uh, Sophia has like blood magic. It works fine and no big deal at all. Um, and then Wrath, the character uh, who is 
who has just been introduced, like literally just introduced. Uh, he goes to knock out Shun because they are supposed to not kill the reincarnations. But then a half-elf, who is not a reincarnation, Anna, she goes to sacrifice herself. Uh, and literally, Wrath says the same thing that I said, which was, they're not going to kill them. Why did you just needlessly die? This is this to pull out our heartstrings. But anyway, she doesn't actually die because Shun uses a taboo ability that he has to uh, call, I believe, Mercy. Um, uh, yes, to save her. But that clicks him over to taboo level 10, which we know another character that has taboo 10. That's when spiders started understanding uh, stuff that happened in the world. So we didn't, we don't get to d delve into that a little bit, but basically our boy Shun is going to start understanding the role that like, he's eventually going to figure out that he's actually like, um, he is, uh, oh, because Harold renewed, uh, we're at 48. So let me change that. 48. Hold on. Sorry. Um, Shun's going to maybe finally understand that he, that the, the L's are actually the bad people and he's been working with the bad people this whole fucking time. Um, anyway, uh, the guy that they've been using, that the demons have been using, um, uh, goes to H Hugo. He goes to attack Sophia. She almost legit kills him, but then she gets stopped by White. And the Isekai folks who haven't met White before are like, oh shit, we know you. You're the, you're the girl that the record said was dead. I mean, they, they thought she was dead. And the teacher like can't believe it. But because, uh, yes, uh, what kind of it? Yes, the girl that they thought had died, that literally the teacher like saw was dead because that's an administrator thing. She did that. She messed with it. But they assumed was dead. Who, uh, because the her, the, the her, they call her white. That form looks like how she looked like in her former life, um, because it's there's the whole thing. Um, anyway, so they realize, holy shit, that's her. So full com confirmation, Spider becomes her. And then we actually see a thing that they couldn't show us until this episode, because if they were trying to be coy at any point, this would have given it away. Uh, our Spider in the past evolves, and her evolution makes her look kind of like, uh, like the human. She's got parts of her are like a human. Um... Folks, I don't know how to really describe this. It's so she's part spider and part human, but she's not like a centaur where um where like the lower half of her is a spider and the top half is a lady. She's not like a lady spider. She's a full goddamn giant spider and growing out of the top of her head is a torso and arms and a head and with hair that looks like a lady. It's like the it's like a legendary divine beast looking spider thing. It's so amazing and I love it. I mean, I look, I like it a lot, uh, Doug. This was the thing that I got spoiled in in the past. Like I've saw, unfortunately, I saw fan art of this. Um, that like in the caption of the fan art was, I can't wait till everyone gets to this point. So like I knew this was coming. There's another thing we'll get to that I did not see coming, but this I saw, this I this I knew. I knew she was going to, there was an in-between that she's dealing with now where she is like a spider with a lady. And it comes into play, this like thing that she has. So she's most excited about that uh, the human head can turn more degrees than her spider head can. So she can see like, she's like, oh, that's pretty great. Um, and she's like, oh, it's weird that I look like this. Um, anyway, uh, uh, she leaves some food for the other spider offspring that are born, which I don't know if that's going to be playing anything or if it was just like, oh, that's nice. And then she's like, okay. Um, oh, hey, there was a battle. Let me see how the baby vampire is doing, who's Sophia, because she knows that this kid was Isekai. And she's like, oh. I've been kind of looking out for her in my own not great way. Let me check in on her, see how she's doing. Um, so she uh, she realizes, uh oh, the elves are coming after Sophia and Sophia's parents. Uh, Sophia is a girl; it's a guy. She's a vampire. She has all her memories, but she's a baby, so she can't like defend herself. Um, 
or like communicate or do anything. She's just, she's a baby. Um, so, uh, and we know something about it, but I won't say what that thing that we learned last week was. Uh, the callback, uh, everything in the show, the Earth Dragon spider runs into the, uh, runs, uh, is the reincarnated one, so that must be a thing. Oh, yeah, the, the, the Earth Dragon egg spider, yes. Um, the spider they meet later is probably one of her offspring. Yeah, no, that's totally, that's totally, that's totally a good way to look at it. Yeah, because she left them there to fend for themselves. And so one of them is probably one of uh, her offspring. Yeah, that's probably right. Because they do call back a lot of stuff. Um, uh, anyway, um, so... Yeah, we'll get into this. Oh, anyway, basically the elves are showing up and Sophia's parents are like, A, to uh, the butler, basically the butler assistant dude, hey, why don't you take her and run? Uh, Mara's office, uh, Mara's office, take her and, and flee. And he doesn't fare well against the elves. He's trying to protect her. He's trying to do everything. Like so the one thing that, this vampire girl can do, which, because, of course, they don't know she's a vampire, she bites him and turns him into a vampire. Then he's able to, like, kick some ass and defend himself enough for a little while, except the leader shows up, uh, Potamus, who we've always had a bad vibe about. He knows about reincarnations. Uh, he's been helping the heroes, but, like, mm, uh, you know, and he has all this, like, technology he shouldn't have, and we've heard that one of the leaders, you know, years ago, uh, used this magic that should be forbidden uh, and kind of ruined this world by using it. And it was, you know, if it wasn't him, it, he was definitely along for the ride. Um, so we know he's bad news. And he shows up and he's like, well, you know, we can control the other reincarnations, but we're not going to be able to control this one. Because she's a vampire, she'll grow too strong. So instead, we should just kill her. And then we'll say that she died in battle. And whatever. Um, so that's not good. Uh, but anyway, luckily for her, Spider shows up. And Spider is just, like, you know, kind of protecting her. Like, nah, nah, that's not going to happen. Um, she kills, instantly kills all the other elves, except for Phonimus, who she... She just shows up and punches him, which is pretty great. Uh, she should have used magic uh, because he does put up a magic barrier that means she can't use most of her skills and she and it like lowers her stats and also she can't escape because she can't use escape magic, but internal magic still works. So, which is good. Um, and so she can use some internal and she fucks him up enough to reveal and here's the thing that, hey, I didn't see this shit coming. And maybe, maybe Doug, maybe you saw this shit coming, but I didn't. Um, Potamus is a motherfucking cyborg or android or some kind of shit. Yeah, dude's, um, basically, dude's a fucking Terminator. Because his skin peels off and he's a robot in the inside. And I know that last episode, they introduced mechs. They introduced robots. So anything's on the table, I guess. But... You know, I didn't for a second imagine the possibility that that fucking dude was like a robot. And then, so later, I'm just going to explain this now. It's that they have cloning technology. So there's a real body out there somewhere, but this is like a clone of that body. Um, and sure. Okay, sure. I did not expect that shit. So he has probably been, you know, he's got ancient technology and other world technology and he's doing a whole thing. He's doing a whole thing and he's weird. But yeah, he's a goddamn cyborg. Uh, spider loot. Also, Spider loses her human head, which she doesn't really need because uh, she has two heads, which I think is great. Um, oh, when Spider reaches Taboo 10, they show a nuke go off. I forgot about that. It's a flash of a lot of stuff. Um, so that's the world ending thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. They do show a uh, they do show a nuke going off. 
Um, so uh, they're fighting, and it's kind of a standoff because she can use her some of her abilities, her evil eye abilities. She can use that to fight. Um, where we go. Sorry. Oh, this goes like this. Okay, so this goes up here. No. I've got this the wrong way. This goes like this. Got it. Got it. Here we go. Now I know what I'm doing. Um uh anyway, yeah, so it's basically a stalemate, and the stalemate is broken by the demon lord showing up. And the demon lord fucking rips the Potamus's head off and then stomps on it. And then it's basically like, um, someday I'll do the, the I'll do the same to the real you. Which is like, oh, okay. I guess they've been obviously feuding for a very long time. And uh I should also point out there's a whole thing with the demon lord where she's definitely come from spiders and she uh, part of her personality has been, uh, her soul has been altered by um, uh, white, so she is different, and she has taken on some characteristics of white, um, which makes her, like, not want to kill her, because it's been a stalemate, um, and she's like, hey, let's have a truce, because I need your help. Because uh, if, if you're someone that I have trouble killing, then you would be very good with me and as we plot to eventually kill Potamus and save the world. Um, but yeah, because her personality has been changed, so she's like not sure if she really does want to kill her. She's like, I've lost motivation for killing you. So good job, uh, the brain that's stuck around in, uh, in Ariel uh, and caused this change to happen. Good work. You did good. Um, so... Uh, she extends that offer also to uh, Marizophis and Sophia, Sophia to be like, hey, also, why don't you come with me? The elves are going to hunt you down, but you'll be safe in the demon realm, which is where we're headed. And uh, I'll, I'll protect you. Um, and then the, the really smart thing that this show does, I think, I think a, a little touch that is really great, the show has lots of little great touches, is that they're like, Sophia uses telepathy now because she's like kin with uh, the, the new vampire. And she's like, hey, I've been a vampire and I turned you into a vampire. And he just goes, well, that explains a lot. And it's just like, it's very, very understated. If him being like, that's why I'm alive and that's why I have all these powers. And that's why you seem special and people want to kill you. And it's just like, okay. All of this checks out. And it's just a fun little touch where they're like, well, yeah, you saved our lives. And we're, you know, and you're saying that, you know, humans don't like vampires. But if we go there, it'll be cool. Uh, I've not been frustrated so much with a series I've watched the entirety for so long. Oh, so the thing that I would say about this show is. Um, anyway, um, obviously, we know that White is joining forces, the Demon Lord. Um my major issue with this show is that it tries to have things both ways. It tries to be a different, odd kind of isekai, where the main character is a spider. And we're going to see what's an isekai when you don't become a human, uh, what the hero when you're a spider in a dungeon and you're just trying to survive and you're using whatever spells you can and you become kind of godlike in your own way. And you've got, and like, you might have a fun like outlook on life or you might be going through psychosis uh and your powers that you're using are just playing with your mind uh and warping you uh little column a little column b um but it also wants to be this like big story all these different characters with betrayals and all this other stuff and like this and this main character's milk toast main character like a traditional modern isekai. So it's trying to be postmodern and modern at the same time. And I hate that. It's very frustrating. The blink complaint I heard from a lot of people is that basically just ignored the human bits because they were really boring. 
Um, yeah. So I would say, so the light, this is like the light novels do all this. And then the manga goes, we can't do these parallel stories. Let's focus on the spider and then we'll do the humans later. The anime tries to do, to go back to the, the light novel and, and do the jumping back and forth between the two stories. But it is, to me, it is boring. I don't care. And I think if this story was, did not have the spider at all and was just Shun's adventures and working for people that he thought were doing the right thing because you imagine elves and humans are doing the right thing and the demon lord is doing the wrong thing and the demon lord is working with a dude who is clearly evil. They're using him, but they are working with an evil dude. So the demon lord is wrong. Like, and then you're like starting to just realize, oh shit, I've been played this whole time. I understand where you would end up there. Like liking the show or, or certainly least appreciating it. But we've got a better show within the show. And so I don't know, I don't know anyone who's like, Oh man, every time they jump to the spider, I'm just wish they would go back and see what's going on with Shun. Like, uh, uh, the revelation that has me reeling is that spider is the real power behind it all. The demon Lord is, uh, assumed by her. The vampires are dedicated to their savior. She's in charge. She is the quiet outward stoic personality. But so Doug, in some ways I, I, I agree with you. But I don't think that uh, press the lights on the Banshee for the first time. Oh, last brick. I hope it goes good. Um, putting, in those, putting in those lights. Uh, I hope it all works out for you. Um, I don't know if I fully agree with you, Doug, because I, the thing is that while she certainly has an influence on the Demon Lord because she changed her, it's not, a, it's not a, um, an influence that she can really work on because it's not like she has connection with that mind anymore. She lost that parallel mind. So it's not like she's in control of the Demon Lord. She's just, um, uh, she's influenced her, which is good. Uh, also, the 3D CGI in the second half was really jarring. To I agree. Uh, there's a good anime that made use of CGI well these days. 100%. So to me, when the dragons... And the other big monsters were CGI. It was okay because when they interacted directly with the spider, they couldn't be CGI. So up close, they had to be digital. So I didn't mind the CGI in that aspect. But once they started putting armor on people, because otherwise, how are they going to draw these two giant battles, these humans versus humans, and then later humans uh, and a couple demons versus elves? Well, we can't draw that, so we got to CGI it. And then especially when they put um, Shun in armor, to CGI him versus Hugo. That sucks. Uh, no kind of value on the monsters, the 3D people. Yeah. So when they put, when they had their main character, one of their main characters, fighting against his arch rival, and they decided they were going to put them in armor so they could make them CGI, that's a bummer. And I understand 24 episodes, they clearly had some production. There are two, there are two houses working on this project. There is the, uh, the house that is doing you know, one, one, the CGI and that got overwhelmed and was behind. And I get that. And I understand that. And I want people to be taken care of and I want them to be paid well. And I want them to be like, not stressed, but they shouldn't have made this show 24 episodes. They could have done 12 and then done a second season. If that, if they, if they were able to do that without using CGI for humans and elves, I, it would have been, I would have preferred it way more than the choice they did make, which is, well, we're going to, we're going to rely on CGI to get some of the stuff done, which is a shame. Uh, it's a bummer. We got to move on because, uh, oh, thank you for subscribing. Thank you so much. Uh, Aristofan just gifted a sub. Uh, Cuddle Fishman, enjoy that. Thank you so much. I'll throw the Barricade Lego site the mode in the chat. Um, uh, and thank you, Aristofan, for gifting that sub. Really appreciate it. We got to move on. I, I'm going to kind of breeze through some of these things because uh, I got 20 minutes left because I do want to end a little bit because, like I said, there's a stream at 11. Um, but uh, I want to have a couple minutes to myself before that starts because it will start a little late anyway. Um, but I, I want a couple minutes to myself before that stream starts. So, uh, oh, Akito. Uh, also just got a subscription because Aristofan just gifted another sub. 
getting me back up to 50. Thank you so much, Aristofan. Appreciate that very much. Uh, we're back at 50. Thank you, Aristofan, for that. That's 32 gifted subs in the community over time. Thank you so much for that. Akito, welcome back to being a subscriber. Uh, enjoy. Um, all right, so um my next life is a villainous again i'm going to talk about this one pretty lightly because of the second season um so this episode felt weird because the second arc of the story hasn't really started yet so this felt like the you know what episode this felt like this felt like the episode where um it's like halfway through a season and it's in between storylines so like the first storyline wrapped up or like the introduction arc wrapped up and then like we haven't gotten to the big world yet the big reveal so instead we're doing like just it felt like a slice of life episode like um katarina is celebrating the fact that she survived she was supposed to be at best exiled and at worst uh murdered and she she was fine. She, she got the friend ending, everything. And even even being on the secret storyline with the character that she had never played that storyline that, like, was going to use magic to stop her. She, like, with the help of friends, like, fought that off and survived. So she's kind of, like, celebrating uh, her win. And it, most of this episode is, like, reintroducing you to the characters. There's, like, a plot summary that happens. It's reintroducing you to the characters and the world. Uh, of the show, which I think is like totally fine. Um, like the five Omaki chapters of a manga. Yes, yeah, totally. Like it's just this thing where it's like it's just the light, it's just the light story of like getting you like caught up in what's going on. And so it's just like there's a there's a festival happening, and there's going to be a play, and there's um, some food, and it's a chance for a bunch of characters in the show to. Uh, kind of interact with one another and like reintroduce the audience and maybe people were just jumping in maybe you're going to start with season two i don't know why you would but maybe you are and it's going to introduce you to all the characters and what's going on in the show and i think it's totally fun to do that um and at the very end of the episode uh we are introduced to so our our main girl uh, is who was Isakai, and she's in a dating game, but she came in as the villain of the dating game, uh, you know, dating video game, an Otome game. Uh, and so she's like, but she she solves it, everything's good. Um, her betrothed, uh, 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 Giorgio, and his brother, Alan, you, we know those characters from the first season. Well, apparently, they've got two older brothers. Uh, did I write their names down? Uh, n I did not write their, and they have fiancés, and one of those fiancés is very flirty, and I was like, I bet that's going to come back in to play. Um, and, uh, they should run in, and then they're like, hey, there's trouble. We don't know what that trouble is, but in the next episode, the preview, like, there's a moment preview where, uh, Katarina is like, why am I playing the villain? And my assumption is they have to jump into the play. That's my guess. Because we're not ready to get the real story. There's another thing that happens, which is a bunch of characters interacting where she is like, my women's intuition. Well, her women's intuition is just wrong. She doesn't understand that every character in the show wants to be with her, with the exception of maybe Sophia, who still loves her, but also, but probably more likely wants her brother to end up with her um uh because she's not ready to run away like mary is to a place where people are going to be cool about the fact that they're gay um uh but yeah there's a whole thing uh about all these different love triangles and her thinking people maybe are dating or something and just not getting it just not getting it just never getting it because she's clueless about those things um but yeah also, there's a point where she gets this big, like, brooch, this emerald or this ruby or jeweled jeweled brooch, and but we don't see the face of the person that sells it to her, and that made me go, uh oh, that sounds like that could be a thing. I don't know. Um, oh, also, there's a, a my favorite little plot line before we move on to remake our life, which was 50 fucking minutes, so it's gonna take a little while to talk about it. Uh, when we got to the point of remake our life, um. So we got to the part of the episode. Um, Katarina 
wonders if she can join the uh the magic cat or not the magic the mm, the department of magic because uh if she does then maybe she won't have to immediately get married because she's worried and it's not because she's like oh i don't love uh you know i don't i don't want to do this because i'm not sure i'm in love she's like i can barely handle being the uh, the duke's daughter i don't think i can handle being like royalty because she would marry a prince so uh she's very much like uh yeah it would probably really fuck up if i I did that i don't think i can handle it so she's like what if i could avoid that and then also maria who wants to join the group is or the department of magic is like well then we could be together and hang out and one of the reasons she's doing going to that place is so that she can uh, increase her social standing so that she can stay friends with katarina uh which is nice especially since because of her she can't marry you know anyone uh that she has met who is well known because they're all in love with katarina so all her marriage prospects because she should be theoretically the main character of her story but she is not the main character of her own story anyway it's a good show it's a fun isekai i love the first season i'd like to know what the plot of this one is um i you know i think we'll figure that out in, in episode two um remake our life this shit was fucking great y'all um there are a couple things about this show i want to tell you about um i'll probably get more detail as we go uh through uh uh in the future this is basically like having two episodes uh back to back but as a double because like i said it was 50 minutes which is great that's that's good good that they were given that much time um it is the story of kyoya and uh uh what the heck the yeah happens so infrequently yeah when when that was the last 50 minute episode yeah i don't know i mean it was kind of like they they did like a really long 40 something minute episode of the ova for um noblis and then they didn't so because it was basically an ova pilot and then years later they finally made the show and when they made the anime they just didn't redo those couple episodes so that's kind of like the last thing I can think of where they did like basically a episode zero. But it's been a long time since we've gotten a long episode. Um, uh, here's a couple things. So let me tell you the basic premise, right? The premise as I knew it is there's a dude, he's 28. His The company he worked for just went out of business. He had been in a regular office job and quit that to go work for a video game company that made bad games that no one played, uh, and he didn't enjoy it. But he got he he wanted to to do it right, and he has a lot of regrets. And he he wonders, what if what if instead of going in and getting a business degree at regular school, I had gone to that art school? There's this art school. And the year I went, I would have gone there if I had gone to this art school is the Platinum Generation, which reminds me too much of the Generation of Miracles, which is a basketball reference, a ba anime basketball reference. But that's what it reminds me of when I when I keep seeing these characters, when I keep seeing the Platinum Generation. Anyway, there was the Platinum Generation, uh, these incredible artists, these be be uh, beautiful works of art these people made from this school. What if I had been there? Could I have been one of those? Could I have like worked with that trio and gotten and, like done cool art? You know, there's a there's a lot of what ifs for this character. And then he's like, what if I could go back in time 10 years? And he falls asleep. And then he wakes up the next day and he hasn't traveled back in time. And that's how you know this this thing has 50 minutes because they do a fucking fake out where they don't have him go back in time immediately because you know he goes back in time because you know the plot of the show but he doesn't go back in time instead he just tries to keep living with his folks and he tries to get a new job uh and he can't get a new job a month later and he sees a woman that he thinks is is about to jump off a bridge like a walk bridge but she's just taking her shoes off because she's fucking pissed off because someone just quit uh and her name is uh Kawa, uh Kawasagawa. Uh, Kawasagawa. Kawasagawa. Yeah, Kawasagawa is just like, 
no, I need someone to do this stuff and blah, blah, blah. And so he gets a job working for her. And you're like, wait, I thought this motherfucker traveled in time, traveled back in time. Why is he working a dream job for this woman? Um, and he's working like he's working eventually like he's got a contract. He's not a full employee, but eventually he'll get a job working there and he'll work on this big video game with the pl with members of the platinum generation like he's 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 on his way well they lose funding and that he gets laid off and his or his contract gets uh null and void because i mean you know yeah because like so the project is canceled and then he's like oh and he goes to bed and then he wakes up and he he's traveled back in time folks and that's the show the show is now that he's now that he's traveled back in time, he he goes to, he goes to art school. He makes the move to go to art school. He's gonna follow his dream because things didn't work out in his first life, so he might as well. And there's a fucking there's a second fucking fake out in this show where the like he falls asleep and he wakes up and he's like back in reality working for the first job that he hated. But that's just actually literally a dream. He just dreamed like a weird thing. Uh, he meets his uh, his flat, or he's sharing a house, uh, renting a house with uh, three other people who are all in the visual arts program. And he meets them. Um, and we find out at the end of the episode, because of course it is, um, uh, uh, Shinoaki is one is the artist that he loved of these of these this generation of art of talent. The girl that he the the creator he most admired is his roommate because of course he she is also the the his former short term boss is also going to that school and she like knows what's up uh well she doesn't know what's up with him but like she's like on the ball and he feels like very out of sorts because he doesn't know all the terms like it's it's very interesting because right away he's 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 realizing that just because I know things that happen in, in the future doesn't mean, and I'm a 28 year old in an 18 year old body doesn't mean I'm going to be good at like art stuff because I just, not all the art stuff because I don't have the knowledge of it. I don't have this base of it. I, you know, um, I was a problem solver and a fixer. I wasn't a, uh, I wasn't like a filmmaker. I don't know how to write a script, all this stuff. So uh, that's interesting. I really like that. Like he's got self doubt, and then uh, Shira Shinoaki is like, "Yeah, but you're like really well put together. Like you know how to cook for yourself, and you know how to clean and organize things, and you're like, you keep to a schedule. All this stuff that like I can't figure out how to do because yeah, because he's 28 and like a good hard worker, so." He is he is in some ways ahead of the game, uh, just not in every way. And I think that's really interesting that like his it's not that like going to art school is going to fix it because, you know, he still doesn't know what he's going to do there. I don't know. I liked it. Uh, overall, I will say it's cool and fun. And I can't wait for the next episode because I really do think that it's interesting. There's something there and I'm psyched about it. Um so I do recommend that. That's that's so far the standout show that I've watched this season. And then let's talk about an isekai. How a realist hero rebuilt the kingdom. Um, It's good. I, I'm going to keep watching it. Uh, yeah, definitely one of the promising ones. Yeah, I'm definitely going to keep watching uh, Realist Hero. Um, I, it, Dude gets summoned. So here's the thing. Dude gets summoned. He doesn't get summoned to like save a kingdom. He gets summoned because that kingdom, uh, they need to send money to another kingdom, like a bigger kingdom. They have to pay, like, like they're they're helping with the war effort. The war effort being fighting demons, and they're like, well, no, we we thought maybe we could just, you know, send you because we could send a hero instead of money. And he's like, okay, um, you could do that. But what happens the next time they need money? You're going to have money then? Why would you waste your opportunity to have this hero? Like, let's see if we can figure out your finances. Let's sit down and help. And basically, that snowballs into the fact that now he's the new king. 
He's now in charge. The king is abdicating his throne. He's going to marry the princess, who is, she's a little tsundere, but I think she, it, she's reasonably tsundere. She's like, I was gone, and this dude is here. Who is Soma? Why is he, why is he the new ruler of the kingdom? What are you talking about? And uh, there's one other thing I want to say that happens in this show that I was not expecting, and that is, towards the end of it, in an attempt to describe what's going on, um, our boy Soma does a Seto Kaiba impression. Uh, he basically says, like, oh, you think you do this, but then this will happen. And he, like, pulls his collar up and, like, kind of scrunches his face. And at first I was like, is he about to do a JoJo? But no, he did a Seto, not a JoJo. He did a Kaiba impression. And I didn't I didn't see that shit coming. I didn't think I would see a Kaiba impression in any anime this year, uh, this season, let alone an Isekai. Uh, which also implies that uh, anim- that, that, that Yu-Gi-Oh! is an anime in this guy's world because he is referencing an anime. Or at least it's a manga. And I think that is very fun that like in the world that he is from, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters is a card game you can play because that is a thing. That is an anime, I assume. I mean, maybe it's real, and that's a real person. Uh, anyway, um, it'll be interesting to see. This is the pro- pragmatic Isekai, so that is interesting to see uh, where this is going to go. I don't know quite where it's going to go, but I'm interested to see the journey because I think that it's a cool, I think it's a cool different idea. Um, you know, I just watched the romance isekai last season that I loved, so I'm not opposed to a good isekai now and again. Um, uh, a ni- different if guy. Yeah, I thought it was a JoJo, but it was me. It was me, Seto. Indeed, it was me, Seto, all along. Um, but yes, it was not a JoJo, uh, and I think that's fun. Anyway, we're gonna get ready to wrap up uh, this stream um, because we are coming to the end of it. Uh, I think we're gonna see if maybe yeah let's see who we're gonna go raid probably hang out a couple minutes and see if uh loading ready run hasn't started doing their videos so we're gonna go raid somebody else but i i am gonna go watch uh uh let's see if beach has tweeted about doing it or if loading ready run has uh tux tux beach Tux, Beach, has he tweeted that he is doing this tonight? Uh, he has not. Has Lingerie Run tweeted that they're doing it? Let's see. Uh, no, they have not, they have not tweeted that. Um, but I believe that's on the schedule. Anyway, that's probably what I'm going to watch. But uh, right now, we are going to go raid Xandra, who's playing Destiny 2. Xandra rules. We love Xandra here. Uh, always psyched to give her a, uh, a follow. Uh, so we're going to go give Xandra a raid here. So feel free to come along on this raid. Uh, Xandra is using her uh, Xandra bot. Uh, so she's doing some VTube and stuff, playing Destiny 2, which is fun. LR hasn't tweeted yet. No, they haven't. So we're going to go raid. Uh, we're going to go raid. Xandra, but I'm probably going to end up eventually watching um, uh, my boy Beach talk about anime. But thank you all so much for being here. I hope you have a great night. Feel free to come along the raid. Um, uh, the lights, the work. Congratulations, Lastberg. I'm glad your lights work. That's awesome. Anyway, we're going to go for this raid. Uh, I will be back uh, on Monday. I'm going to keep working on this Lego set. we got a whole other bag to build. we got to finish this car. Um, thank you all so much for being here. I hope you have a great evening. Feel free to come along on the raid. Feel free to hang out. So come back on Monday as we continue working on this project. I will see you in the next Build With Bear. And I hope you have a great night. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, 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 goodbye.